Hello Zoology. Today we're going to be talking about one of the major subphylum of arthropoda. We've already talked about Tribolita. Now we're going to talk about crustaceans, the insects of the sea. Some general information on these guys. There's 67,000 species of crustaceans. They include lobsters, crayfish, shrimp, crab, copepods, which are these brightly colored little guys down at the bottom, barnacles, and pill bugs. There are mostly aquatic species, but there are some freshwater and very few terrestrial species. They can be microscopic or up to 12 feet large. This crab that this man is holding on the right hand side there, while his body is not 12 feet long, his legs are from one end to the other. Distinguishing features. These guys, their body is divided into a cephalothorax, which is a head and a thorax together, an abdomen and a tail. They have two pair of antennae. They're the only arthropod subphylum like this. Most of them have compound eyes. Some of them have simple eyes. They use jaw-like mandibles to feed. Their abdomen has jointed appendages on most segments. And they have a unique larval stage. This is the Noplius larva over on the right-hand side. There. There's a picture of this Noplius. They have a single large, they have a single larval eye. That's this one right here. Single large larval eye. Body form in crustaceans. The most ancient aquatic crustaceans resemble an aquatic centipede. Very few of these species remain, about a dozen. Most of the species have generalized or specialized greatly since then. They have a cephalothorax or feeding and sensory appendages, and they have chelicipeds or pinchers on the first pair of appendages. These are some different examples up here in this picture of chelicipeds. Abdomen and tail. Their abdomen is lots of segmentation. Usually each segment has paired jointed appendages and the tail has its own paired appendages. They have these uropods, which are these segments here, which form a fin-like tail. Movement in crustacea. They have many pairs of appendages. Most are Baramus, or they are appendages branched like a wisp wishbone on this point here, on this picture to the right. You can see this break here when we talk about crickets. They're uniramus. They have only one. There's no branching. These guys are biramus. Most can lose their legs or pinchers at the base and then regrow them. And because they have a lot of movement, they have very well-defined muscles. Feeding and digestion in crustaceans. They have a great variation in feeding types. All use their mandibles to feed, like these pictures on the right. They can be predators. They can be herbivores, like that guy's eating a cherry. They can be suspension feeders. They hang and use their legs to strain water for food. Barnacles use this method. They can be scavengers or parasites. This one on the bottom right here, he is eating his mole. He's getting all the extra chitin and protein and carbohydrates from that. Because food is scarce at the bottom of the sea, so you have to eat, take advantage of every single resource. Crustacean digestive system. They have a well-developed digestive system. They have a cardiac stomach. It's this first opening here. With a gastric mill for grinding. This is here. Here. They can have these gastroliths, which are large stones that they carry around in their stomach to help grind up their food. And then after the food is ground up, it goes to this pyloric stomach where it gets uh, separated out and filtered. Respiration in crustaceans. In small species, they, fill, they do gas exchange across the body surface. And in larger species, they use these feathery gills, as you can see in this picture, on the basis of their walking legs to breathe. Some species have extra gills that they carry in their shells. Circulation in these guys. They have an open circulation system. No veins or capillaries, it all flows into this big coelom, which we call the hemocele in animals where the blood is filling their semen. Coelom. They have a dorsal heart, which uses hemocyanin, which is a blue pigment using copper, and hemoglobin, which is a red pigment using iron, in their blood. Their blood has a really unique ability to clot. This is the first time we've seen this. This is, a, this is pretty unique for an invertebrate species. You see this a lot in vertebrates, but in invertebrates this is fairly uncommon. Nervous system in these guys. They have two pair of ganglia, these kind of nerve spots here around the eyes, and then they have this ring here that 
supply sense to the cephalothorax and then the ventral nerve there's two of them they run pair and they have each of these have a little bit of a ganglia a little association point that allows them to feel all the way down their body sense organs and crustaceans most have compound and simple eyes they have chemoreceptors which allow them to taste in their mouth they have two pairs of antennae this one's kinda got his tucked behind the other one they have tactile spines on their body they can hear and they can communicate by sound they use it for mating and protection some of them can rub uh, their legs against their body making a sound so can kind of chirp some of them click their claws they can also use light emitting organs like this guy on the right here they can use bioluminescence they can use it for mating rituals and they can also use it to ward off predators endocrine system and crustacean they use hormones to help control when they molt what color their body is how fast their heart beats uh, how much blood sugar they have and sexual development, a lot like we use uh, sec hormones for sexual development in the case of puberty, these guys very much have something very similar. Excretory system and crustacean. Their nitrogenous wastes are expelled through the skin. If they don't have any gills, this is for small species. If they have gills, they can excrete waste out of them. And then some of them have these specialized antennal glands. These are located at the base of the antennae and they're used to regulate salts and water as well as to secrete these nitrogenous bases. wastes. Reproduction in these guys. Most are dioecious. Some barnacles are hermaphrodites because they don't have a lot of other hermaphrodites around them. Some use courtship rituals using visual, chemical, or auditory cues. Females can only mate after they undergo their last molt. Some carry their eggs after they're already fertilized. And then some use parthenogenesis with no males in the species. This is that process that we've talked about before of females being able to reproduce without use of other males. So some of these species, males are very uncommon or they're completely non-existent. They've evolved to the point where they no longer need men. This is all on crustaceans. You guys have questions 1 through 7 on page 734. And then we're going to talk about... I believe it's the Chelicerates next, so our spiders and scorpions. Hope you guys are having a wonderful Thursday. Talk to you later.